All right, come here, guys. Come here. We got it. It's finally here. The brand new A7 IV. It's still a secret. We're going to do shoot with this bad boy, 33 megapixels, 4K60, it's got all the stuff. We're gonna shoot it, I'm gonna show you everything, and uh, let's go, we got a sick location here. We're in the office because I need to take a look at some of the image samples. So this is going to be kind of a first impressions on this camera, but I did try to cover as much as I could in the short matter of time I had with the camera. This is early production firmware, so I'd prefer to make my full review once I get my own copy. So the gyro stabilization tech that they first released in A7S III is now in this camera. It's also in a bunch of other cameras. It works really amazing, especially when you compare it to how it looks handheld versus how it looks after it's stabilized in Catalyst Browse. It blows my mind every time I see this. It's not warp stabilizer. It's using the gyro data and the camera to smooth it out. So you don't really get that warpy look. It works in all frame rates except 120 frames per second. And to get the best results, you gotta turn the IBIS off and shoot at a higher shutter speed than you normally would. The camera also has active stabilization as well. So it's basically digital stabilization on top of the IBIS. So it's doing a pretty good job. I've used it from time to time on the A7S III doing like some handheld stuff. I'd say the A7 IV looks about the same and there is a small crop, but that's to be expected. When it comes to the body design, I noticed that it feels and looks almost identical to the A7S III when I first picked it up. And there's only a few minor differences and you know, the, how this camera feels in my hand feels amazing. There's no complaints. I really like how it feels. It feels like a refined camera and I think Sony nailed it. The button placement as well as the ports are nearly the exact same as A7S III. It even has the same articulating touch flip screen. Finally, we got a nice screen in the lower end A7 camera. It's got decent EVF too at 3.68 million dots and it's 120 frames per second. The only two main physical differences I notice is that the A7 IV has no locking mode dial and below that there's a new lever to switch between photo, video, and S and Q while allowing you to leave the mode dial separate. And this is really a clutch. This is similar to how Fuji does it on the X-T4. And now you also have the option to have your photo and video settings independent from each other, which makes hybrid shooting way easier. It's way faster because you don't have to switch modes between them. <sighs> okay, that's a lot of info, but we're just getting started here because I haven't even talked about the sensor yet. This is a brand new sensor. It's a 33 megapixel full frame BSI sensor, 759 phase detect autofocus points, which is gonna cover 94% of the sensor. As far as I'm aware, it's using the same processing engine as the A1 and you know, that camera's crazy fast, the autofocus is crazy fast, and processing and writing of the card is also really fast. One new feature they've added in the menu is something I think might go overlooked, and I think it's a big deal, I think it's awesome. It's focus breathing compensation. It only works on a few G Master lenses right now, but basically it crops in on the lens slightly, somehow digitally moves with the focus, somehow giving it zero focus breathing, and that's amazing for some of the lenses that have really bad focus breathing. And this is really cool, so I actually assigned it in the function bar so that I can toggle it on and off easily. And uh, let me know if you wanna see like a deeper dive video into the menu system on this camera and also how I set up Sony cameras. When it comes to the autofocus, that's where I noticed a massive improvement. It's the most reliable, accurate eye autofocus I've ever used next to the A1. And they've included human, animal, and bird IAF as well. And you know, this thing's had like the most advanced real-time tracking I've ever used and it's mind-blowing. I sound like a sales pitch, but it really is that good. to the IO, the camera has two UHS-2 card slots and the top card can also accept a CF Express Type A card. So you can just rattle off shots at high speed continuous shooting without really worrying about it getting backed up in the buffer. And you know, on the other side of the camera, we've got a mic jack, headphone jack, micro USB, as well as USB-C 3.2. So that's gonna give you 10 gigabits per second, which is super fast for tethering. You can also charge the camera just like you could before. And it also has a full size HDMI. So obviously I've shown some video samples, but to get more specific, it shoots 4K 10-bit 422, a bunch of different codecs, a bunch of different bit rates. And that 4K is actually oversampled from 7K and it looks super crispy. It can do 4K 24, 30, and 60P in 10-bit 422, but the 60P is only super 35, it's not full frame, but you can still shoot it up to 600 megabits per second. 
basically all the bit rates and codecs are exactly the same as A7S3, so you can shoot in 10-bit 422 1080p if you wanted to. And you can also record proxies at the same time as you're recording 4K video. But there isn't any 4K 120p or any ProRes RAW output like the A7S3 has. And that's understandable. The camera is more expensive and it's more suited for video. The A7 IV is kind of in the middle. It's good at photo. It's good at video. Uh, it's sort of a jack of all trades. But one thing I thought was interesting is that they've also included S Cine Tone, which is in their higher end cinema cameras, and they later added it to the A7S III. And it's also in this. It's really good. I use it on most of my YouTube videos. So Sony's saying that it has 15 stops of dynamic range when shooting S Log3. I don't have any way of determining that, but I'm sure there's going to be someone out there that tests that. Um, but it does actually make sense now to shoot S-Log3 because it's 10-bit. You're going to be able to color grade this without it falling apart like you would have with the 8-bit footage from the A7 III. When it comes to low light, this thing's really good. I was really impressed. I think it has dual native ISO even though Sony never said anything. Um, when you're in S-Log3, you can see the image clean up when you go to 3200 ISO. So from what I'm seeing, it's ISO 800 and 3200 when you're shooting in S-Log3. And I shot a whole video doing low light tests between this and the A7S III and I think you're gonna be surprised, so stay tuned for that video. When it comes to rolling shutter, I did notice some rolling shutter. So I compared it to the a7 III to see if there was any improvements, and it looks almost exactly the same in full frame at 24 frames per second. I'm gonna stop the frame here and you can see. And then I tested it in Super 35 to see the difference, and I think the a7 IV is actually slightly better than the a7 III in Super 35. But then I also tried it in 60 frames per second in Super 35, and here you can tell it's a little bit better. And the last thing I want to mention is that they've improved the connectivity. So the Wi-Fi is now five gigahertz. You're going to get a fast connection speed, less dropouts, less lag. And when you plug a USB cable in, now it's going to ask you what you want to do instead of you having to have it set in the menu. So say you want to connect it as a webcam, uh, it's going to ask you if you want to use it as a webcam and it just does it automatically. Sony's really listened to the user on this camera and basically checked off all the boxes on anything we've wanted in a camera. And I'm super excited to order this thing and get myself my own camera. Um, as I said, I shot a couple other videos, so make sure you turn on notifications when those go live. Thanks to Sony for sending this review unit out to me. I'm super grateful. I was looking forward to this release for a long time. Are you guys gonna pre-order one? This camera is gonna be kind of good for almost everybody. I can't see why you wouldn't want this camera. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Check this out. No dust. No dust will get in there. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot how fast this thing is. Did you hear that? <laughs> is that crazy? Through the fence? <laughs>